Well, greetings and welcome to another episode of Carl's Spirits, ladies and gentlemen. This will be episode 71, and in today's episode, we're going to be looking at something slightly different, something we normally don't find here in Missouri, and that is Chattanooga whiskey. And this particular expression from Chattanooga, Chattanooga whiskey is their bottled in bond expression. So in late June of 2021, just a month ago, Chattanooga Whiskey announced this release. Uh, and keep in mind, this is only released in certain st select states. Missouri is not one of those. So that's why I said it's a little bit rare around here. Uh, fortunately, I had a friend who was traveling, going through Chattanooga. They stopped at the distillery, picked up a bottle, and he was uh, very gracious enough to let me sample it. So thank you, my friend. But uh, Chattanooga came on the scene back in 2011, becoming the first distillery in Chattanooga, Tennessee in over a century. For that, it had been, been against the law to distill in Chattanooga. Uh, in 2015, so after four years, they began to put together a process that created a very unique malt forward style of bourbon they call Tennessee High Malt. Uh, so uh, the malted grains are allowed to germinate slightly before being added to the um, fermenters, the fermenting tanks, excuse me. Uh, finally, after eight years, uh, they have put together their Tennessee high malt whiskey. Uh, it was released in August 2019, and since then, further expressions in their experimental collection and other collections have followed. So this is their newest release. Again, uh, as of this recording here in July of 2021, this is only about a month old. And I've explained what a bottled in bond is in a previous uh, several episodes, but uh, it may be time for a very quick refresher. So to be labeled as a bottled in bond, the bourbon must, number one, it must be the product of one distillation season. And so this is uh, labeled as spring 21, right there, if it'll focus for you. Uh, two, it must be the product from one distiller. So only one person has their hands on the controls. Uh, three, it must be the product of one distillery. So you can't get uh, source bourbon from different distillers, mix it together and call it a bottle and bond. It almost come from the same place, the same person at the same time. Finally, it must be aged in a federally bonded warehouse for a minimum of four years. And the fifth and final requirement for bottled and bond is that it must be bottled at exactly 100 proof. So Chattanooga Bottled and Bond meets all of those requirements, but then it goes several steps further to ensure its originality. So what do I mean by that? Well, first of all, they use a selection of four unique high malt mash bills. They're all made within the same distilling season, so at the same time. So that meets that first requirement up uh, in the requirements for Bottled and Bond. Each is comprised of at least 25% specially malted grain. On the bottle, they even tell us which particular mash bill blends they use in this bottle. And again, I don't know if the camera will focus, but you can see right here, uh, it will tell you that they are going to use uh, B001 at 17%, B004 at 17%, B005 at 33% and SB055 at 33%. What, I, what is not really clear here uh, is exactly what is included in each specific mash bill. And for me, that's kind of disappointing. I like to know the exact mash bill. What is mentioned though on the company website is that they use four grains in each of those mash bills. They use the same four, but in different proportions to get different flavors. They use a yellow corn, they use a malted rye, they use a caramel malt, and they use a honey malt. Okay, so you're following along so far. So we have all the bottled and bond requirements. Now we're using four different mash bills with the same four grain, okay? So now we're gonna take it a step further. Half the batch, 
that comes out of the vat is going to be barreled in a seasoned wooden barrel uh, with a number four heavy char. And that's going to give it a lot of your traditional bourbon flavors. The other half is going to be bear, uh, is going to be slow toasted for 30 minutes to really bring out those uh, vanilla tannins and so forth before being charred to a number three char. So then they are then aged for four years. Then those both pat batches of barrels are then going to be dumped in a Solera vat, which never runs dry. And so we've got those two different things now barreled or blended together, if you will. It's going to be in a Solera vat, so this means it's a continuous run. Every uh, After in each bottling run, they are going to dump another 8 to 12 barrels on top. Everything's continually blended and mixed. So there's a lot to process there. And that's before we even taste the thing. So Chattanooga is doing a lot of incredibly complex and different techniques to really set themselves apart from other uh, craft distillers uh, that are popping up around the nation. So uh, let's actually get into this bottled and bond and see how it tastes, because that's really what you're here for. So first of all, nice little bottle, nice big original real cork. <clears throat> uh, the mash bill on this is not disclosed. As I just went through, it's a blend of four different mash bills with four grains and malts. Uh, you have that yellow corn, that malted rye, the caramel malt, the honey malt. Uh, all of that is in each of the four blends that were put into this bottle. Uh, age, it is at least four years old to be a bottled and bond. Uh, from the website, it says it's, it says it's at least four years, so I imagine it's four years and a few months, if I had to guess. And it is bottled at the required 100 proof. Uh, color, it's a light amber uh, it's got some nice thick lines and legs. Uh, they creep down, uh, not terribly quick, but faster than some others. So let's see how we do here. So first off, I get a nose of smoky, fruity honey. Okay, now maybe the honey thing is a suggestion from one of those four ingredients, but I really get a lot of honey on the nose. There's also a lot of smoky notes here as well. Uh, at the end, really deep in that flavor, there's a rye spiciness, kind of a sweetened, spicy cinnamon, if you will. So the light, the front is actually very light scented uh, with that smoky honey, and then it really comes on heavier with that sweet and spicy cinnamon, uh, heavier scent. So it's a medium, a medium mouthfeel. Uh, it is very creamy on the taste. It's um, it's not quite chewy, but it's real smooth and creamy. Uh, there's also some fruited honey here in this taste. Now I keep saying fruit, fruited honey. Uh, I'm not quite sure what fruit taste I'm getting. Uh, like I, like you know, I've tasted this before I went on camera to be thinking about what I want to say. And I'm not quite sure what fruit taste I'm picking up. It's not a heavy citrus. Um, it's not a dark fruit, but it's, it's a fruit note that I'm not quite sure what it is. It's noticeable, but I can't quite identify it. That smoky note also makes an appearance with a little oak. And there's definitely some chocolate malt here, almost like a, like a milk dud, if you will. And I really enjoy that. It's kind of a nice surprise to have that pop in there. Now, on the finish. The finish is not especially long, but it is very satisfying. It's got that sweet and spicy cinnamon. Gives you a nice burn. There's also a little, I'm going to call it black tea. Uh, note, uh, kind of a, an oiliness of a black tea, if you will, the, the, the tart black tea taste. It's kind of there right on the very back of the palate for me. So overall, really quick here, 
Guys, Chattanooga has put a lot of effort into this bottle, and I can really appreciate uh, the complexity and the skill it took to blend this particular expression. Uh, I do wish they were a little bit more clear on the exact mash bill, and I do wish it were more widely available, although, to be fair, it's only been out a month. It's only available in four or five states, and I would imagine over time that would change. Uh, I think price is a little prohibitive at $50. I'm not saying they're not charging what it's worth, but uh, MSRP is around $50. That seems to kind of be the standard for craft bourbons at the moment. Um, but it's a little, little steep, I think, for what's actually here in the bottle. Uh, finally, for me, the fruit is a little too forward. That unidentifiable fruit that I can't quite um, put my nose on or my taste buds for that matter. On the positive side, it's incredibly easy to drink 100 proof bourbon. Uh, it does have some really great flavors for me. I love that smoky chocolate and honey. Uh, among them, I really enjoy uh, that flavor mix, that honey, chocolate, smoke. Uh, that's something that's very enjoyable for me, not so much with the fruits. So on the Carl scale, where are we gonna wind up? I'm gonna go 3.75 Carl stars. That's 3.75. Uh, it's a good, easy to drink bottled and bond bourbon. But those unidentifiable fruit notes uh, just don't do it for me. And I do enjoy that smoky, honey chocolate, but the fruit, the cost, I'm not sure the whole process that they went through to get this particular bottle is necessarily what we get in the bottle. If you understand what I mean. It's a little too complicated for what this is. This is a fairly straightforward uh, bourbon. So uh, take that for what that's worth. You know I've always said uh, everybody's tastes are different and yours may be different than mine and that's okay. So guys, in conclusion, I want everyone to stay safe, peace, and happy pours.